I'm the angry chemist. Watch if you want, see if I care. Be careful though, you might learn something if you do. Alright, so, sorry I'm just eating some crisps. This, this war video, it's going to look at the major and minor products when we do the electrophilic addition reactions of alkenes. Because you may have seen or be aware that when you add things to an alkene, there are often two possible products. And we're going to identify which one's the major and the minor and explain it. Right, how are we going to do that? Well, um, we need to know what carbocations are. Don't worry, I'll tell you. That's what this is all about, isn't it? So calm down. Um, we need to look at them as primary, secondary and tertiary. Again, don't worry, I'm going to explain. Calm down. Um, and then, well, it's kind of the same thing twice, isn't it? Never mind. Let's move on. Don't know why I'm doing this, but I've watched hundreds of other YouTubers do this. So there you go. Do the, do your thing. Subscribe or don't. See, I'm not bothered. Move on. Right. So key terms. Um, a carbocation. It's a carbon that only has three bonds and a positive charge. Why is that important? Well, usually carbon has four bonds, doesn't it? So in all of its stable um, compounds in organic chemistry, it has four bonds. So it's an intermediate here. It only exists part way through your mechanism. It's not actually very stable at all. So it has three bonds and a positive charge. All right, my mouse has stopped working. That's great, isn't it? I'll just have to get the keyboard. Don't worry. Right, so an R group then. I'm going to use this term R group quite a lot in this Oops, in this video. I nearly fell off my chair. Um, an R group is a chain of carbon atoms. It could just be something as simple as a CH3 group. That would be a very simple R group, just a methyl group. It could be an ethyl group. It could be much longer. I don't really care, all right? If it's an R group, it just means it's bonded to a carbon group. When I say group, it can be any carbon group, okay? It's not that hard, trust me, okay? You're going to make it hard. I'm not, all right? So primary, secondary or tertiary, right? Well, a primary carbocation is when one of those three groups that's bonded to the carbon, remember carbocation has three bonds and a positive charge. When one of those three bonds is bonded to an R group and the other two are not, then we call it a primary carbocation. Guess what? Don't make it too difficult. Because if two of those three groups are R groups, what's an R group again, I hear you asking? Well, tough, rewind the video. Um, when two of those groups are R groups, we call it a secondary carbocation. And guess what? If all three of them, well done, smarty pants. When all three of them are R groups, then it's a tertiary carbocation. Key facts. Pretty sure I've already said this, but never mind. We'll, oh, no, it was key terms. It was key terms. Well done. All right. Sorry. Um, key facts. Now, an R group is electron pushing or R groups are electron pushing. Just accept it. All right. They're, they're electron pushing. So what this means is tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations because a tertiary carbocation has three R groups that are electron pushing helping to stabilize the positive charge. The secondary would only have two electron pushing R groups to stabilize the charge. So the tertiary is more stable. And using the exact same logic, a secondary carbocation is more stable than a primary because it has two electron pushing R groups, which make it more stable. So this leads to major and minor product. When I say major, I mean most of the product is this one. The minor means less of it in terms of percentages. Okay, so it might be like an 80% to 20%. It just means you make more of one than the other. Okay, it doesn't mean that it's kind of in the army or anything like that. Major just means there's more of it. All right, good. So there's always two possible carbocations in an alkene. So during the reaction, it's either the carbon on the left or the carbon on the right, because there's two carbons in a double bond. So there's two possible carbocations. 
Now, if the alkene is symmetrical, which means both carbons either side of the double bond have identical groups, symmetrical, then both carbocations are actually identical because they're just the same. However, if the alkene is asymmetrical, in other words, they are not identical groups, this means the carbocations are different and it will lead to two possible products. Now, the best thing for me to do would be to look at an example, wouldn't it? So guess what? Let's have a look at the reaction of HBr with this alkene, propene. Now that is classed as an asymmetrical alkene because there's different groups on both carbons in the double bond look. The carbon on the left has a H and a H. Carbon on the right has a H and a CH3. They are definitely not identical to an asymmetric. It's with HBr. Now HBr is a polar molecule. Bromine is more electronegative than hydrogen. So the electrons are unevenly shared in this bond. It's a polar molecule. That's the first arrow in this electrophilic addition. It goes from the pi bond to the hydrogen. No matter how many times I say this, some people get it the other way around and draw the arrow going the wrong way around. Well, tough. I've told you now it goes from the pi bond to the H. The arrow shows movement of electrons. Next curly arrow, the HBr bond breaks. And this leads to two possibilities. I can either bond the hydrogen to the carbon on the left and the carbon on the right would be a positive charge, a carbocation. And that's what I've chosen to do here. So if I go down this route, what we've got is a secondary carbocation look. Why is it secondary? Because there are two electron pushing R groups. And then the final product here would be this. There we go. What if, I hear you ask, the carbocation was the carbon on the left? Don't worry, calm down. So what if we do the exact same mechanism, but this time the carbocation is the carbon on the left? And this is possible. Like I said, there are two possible carbocations, one on the left, one on the right. This time we have a primary carbocation intermediate and that would give rise to this product so these are our two possible products look and the one on the left is classed as the major product because that one formed via a secondary carbocation that was more stable than the primary due to two electron pushing r groups so that's our major product and the one on the right is our minor product. Let's name them, shall we? The one on the left is two bromopropane. The one on the right is one bromopropane. There we go. Well done. Good for you. I don't know why, but I feel the need to finish the video with this. Um, yeah, never mind. I'm going back to my crisps anyway. Thanks for that. Goodbye.